Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. In this video, we are going to analyze the HDR output from Spider-Man Miles Morales on the Sony PS5. And also, I'll give you a few tips to get a better picture along the way. Now, the first thing to say is that you, as the end user, as the gamer, actually decide how high you want the peak brightness to go. Because this is one of a few games which actually depend on the console level HGIG calibration screen from the PS5 to decide its highest peak brightness. By that I mean if I go out from the game and if I actually go into the Sony PS5 HGIG calibration screen, now you may have noticed that I have set the resolution to 1080p and also the RGB range to full for this particular instance because this monitor that I'm actually using to analyze the HDR output. This is the Canon DPV2411. It actually doesn't have the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second or even 40 gigabits per second. So we are stuck with the HDMI 2.0B bandwidth of 18 gigabits per second and that's why I have to downgrade the resolution and also you know set RGB range specifically to full. I'll explain why later for this game. So if we click on the adjust HDR item, then close the game, then what this will bring up is the HDIG calibration screen. Now, initially I've actually set the peak brightness. Oh, it may actually be too bright for you on the camera. So let me just lower the exposure slightly. In fact, by a lot, yes. So Initially, I've set the maximum full frame tone map luminance to 1000 is because this Canon DPV2411 reference broadcast monitor is capable of 1000 nits. It hard clips at 1000 nits. But you know what I'm going to do for the purpose of this demonstration is to actually increase the maximum full frame tone map luminance to 10,000 nits. And then I'm going to increase the maximum tone map luminance to 10,000 nits as well. And then I'll leave the minimum tone map luminance at zero and we'll go back into the game if i can find my way around here and we'll start the game oh in case you know you haven't been watching any of my previous hdr analysis video the canon dpv 2411 allows us to analyze various aspects of the hdr picture quality at the top left corner, you can see a frame luminance monitor. This will jot down the highest peak brightness that is available in the frame and also calculate the maximum frame average luminance level or max FALL. And at the bottom left corner, you can see a waveform. Again, you know, this will correspond to various elements on screen and tell you how high the peak brightness goes. And what I'm going to do in the first instance is to load, you know, a cut scene or a saved scene that I'm not entirely sure which one it is. So I hope this is the one. All right, this is the one. So the reason why I selected this is because it's really early in the game. And as I've mentioned in my previous videos, I don't really have time to, you know, even mess about even on the easiest settings. But, you know, the reason why I selected this is because there's the sun here. Again, I hope you can actually see it clearly. Let me just adjust the exposure on the camera so that you can see it fairly clearly. And if I actually press reset on the frame luminance monitor, what you can see is that, you know, there are various elements on screen that exceed, you know, even 4,000 nits. And if I reset it, if I mess about a bit, you know, there are certain specular highlights that even go all the way up to 10,000 nits. And this corresponds to the 10,000 nit maximum tone map luminance that we have set in the PS5 console on a system level using the HGIG calibration screen. Now, I am going to just let you have a look at the various elements that exceeded, say, the SDR range of 200 nits by engaging the false color function on the DPV 2411 and you can see there is a scale at the left of the screen and various elements on screen are just being shaded in various colors to tell you the exact luminance and you can see that you know it does go quite high you know above 4000 nits and stuff and if I can just turn off the false color the thing is 
I'm really glad that you know this game you know is quite unrealistic in a sense because you know if I was standing in the middle of the traffic as Spider-Man just blocking this taxi then the taxi driver may come out and punch me and but that's not happening allowing me to do all this analysis and maybe you know some people if they recognize that it was Spider-Man they may actually come around and get some autographs or selfies but that doesn't seem to be happening in the game engine so I would say that there is a flaw in the storyline but at least that allows me to just check various attributes of picture quality on the screen. You can see that, you know, the brightest elements would be the headlamps as well, and also the sun here with the rays and stuff. But this monitor is actually clipping it, so the sun is actually blown out. So I'm going to go into the HGIG calibration screen again, and then set it to the correct level to let you see how the sun should actually look like. And if I can get into adjust HDR, close the game. And then we'll go down to when it just clips at 1000 nits. And then here is the same. And then I'll keep it at zero. By the way, I probably should do another video on how to adjust the HGIG calibration screen using, you know, uh, HGIG option on your LG C9 or C10 if it's available or, you know, if it's not available, how to actually use it. But let's get back into the game. So I've actually set the maximum full frame total map luminance and also the maximum total map luminance both to 1000 nits, well, around 1000 nits. And what we're going to do is to go back into the game. And I'll reset the frame luminance monitor. And if I can press start and continue. And because I have actually adjusted the peak brightness in game, so what I'll need to do is to adjust the exposure of my camera as well. Okay, so you can see that currently the luminance or maximum peak brightness on screen is significantly less than 10,000 nits and maybe it should be running around say 1000 nits and with certain specular highlight detail exceeding it slightly from here to there as you actually like pan around and different reflections you know catches the sun then yeah it will exceed 1000 nits and you can see from the sun itself that it is intact you know it is not as blown now as when we set the maximum tone map luminance at 10,000 nits so what this means is that you should ideally you know try and set the HGIG calibration screen to the capabilities of your display especially if your display has an HGIG option that disables all tone mapping and one thing that I actually want to point out is that you know if you look at the waveform you know it gives a very nice you know high dynamic range image and this is because I'm actually using a full RGB output from the game engine. You know, remember in my earlier screen, if I can get out from here, if I can press this and get into the screen and video settings, you can see that under video output information, I'm actually using RGB in the full format, which means that, you know, I'm not actually limiting it. And notice what happens if I actually go to automatic, because this Canon DPV 2411 monitor is only HDMI 2.0B. So once you actually go to automatic and you set RGB range to either automatic or limited or full, it is entirely the same because in order to fit all this signal into an HDMI 2.0 bandwidth of 18 gigabits per second, you can see that they have had to use 12-bit 422 
chroma and YUV422 is always limited in the sense. Now, pay attention to what happens when I actually go back into the game with a limited range of YUV422. And if I can go to Spider-Man, right. I don't know about you, but let me just reset the frame luminance monitor and you can see that regardless of what I do, the maximum peak brightness will never exceed 730 nits. Okay, so the maximum luminance will never exceed 730 nits. And you can see from the waveform itself, you know, that blacks are slightly elevated and also the dynamic range is actually limited compared with full RGB that I've actually used earlier. So either the console is doing something when converting full RGB to YCBCR limited or the game itself is actually doing such a conversion and it is not doing, how shall I put it, a satisfactory job and it's actually reducing the dynamic range of the image. Now if we actually go back out and use the adjust HDR option You can see that, you know, I'm still setting it at 1000 nits and that is still the correct level for maximum full frame luminance. And for the maximum tone map luminance, it is still correct at 1000 nits and I'm setting this at zero. And the game, for some reason, once it actually renders in YCBCR or YUV422, in a limited video range, it actually, you know, has less dynamic range in the sense that the peak brightness doesn't actually go as high as had you used full RGB. So let me just try and reset this. You can see that even on this opening sequence, you know, it will never exceed 730 nits in terms of the peak brightness if you use YCBCR limited and also the blacks may actually float as well. And this is one of the few reasons why I actually recommend using the auto option on the PS5 console in terms of the RGB range because you know if you use limited there may be a chance that you will actually be forced to use YCBCR and cause all this conversion problem which is not really desirable because you know to me the dynamic range if you look at the waveform at the bottom left corner it's reduced and the peak brightness is reduced as well now, regardless of what I do we are stuck at 730 nits the peak brightness is capped at 730 nits and if I actually you know go out here and switch the setting to 1080p because you know I needed to downgrade the resolution in order to fit the signal into the 2.0 bandwidth of 18 gigabits per second and then RGB range again you know full is definitely the default right and there's no difference between automatic and full and if I do limited then there will be a significant change so I will be inclined to leave it on automatic if your display is recognizing automatic correctly or force it to full for now for games you know this is only applicable to games because if you use the blu-ray app then it will always be ycbcr which is why i recommended auto in my initial ps5 settings video so if we force it to full now right and we go back into the game Right? Can you see the dynamic range actually getting higher? And you can see that the peak has actually gone up to 12,000 nits and maybe even higher. So if I actually press this reset thingy, you know, if I pan around, you know, it's almost 1,000 nits now. And then if I, 1,600 nits. So there are various elements on screen that are catching the reflections from the sun and you know just giving out that sort of high peak brightness and you can see at the bottom left corner the waveform the dynamic range seems to be more expanded and higher as well so in my opinion you need to use rgb full with this game in order to enjoy the game and you know in another video i may come around to actually demonstrate what 
effects dynamic tone mapping and also HGIG has on the LG C9 or C10 pertaining to this game. Oh, before I actually end this video, I wanted to check out the WCG use or white color gamut use in this game as well. And I don't think this game is the best showcase of WCG or white color gamut because you know I checked out a few scenes, cutscenes in the beginning, and I think you know if you want to argue, maybe the red jumper on Miles Morales maybe exceed Rec 709 very very slightly, but I think. Most of it, in fact, the majority of it is actually within Rec 709. And if we look at this shot here where there are various colors on the spray cans in terms of the paint, then this should be an ideal you know, scenario for the developers to actually inject some white color gamut use here. But you know, they're all within Rec 709, as you can see. And uh, sign on the shop is within Rec 709 as well. It's at the limit of Rec 709, but it's still not popping or not coming off as more vibrant than Rec 709, if you get what I mean. And if we look at this shot of Peter Parker hanging upside down and his Spidey suit, it doesn't exceed Rec 709 in terms of the rate as well. So from that point of view, I think the white color garment use in this game is very limited. And the HDI use, you know, it depends on how you set your HDIG screen. And for the most accurate picture, you should engage HDIG on your display and then set the HDIG calibration screen from the PS5 correctly so that, you know, the game will total map to your display correctly and try to use full RGB if possible for this game. If you'd like to watch some of our other HDI game analyses, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it and I'll see you in the next video.